Hello everyone. Uh, today I will talk about one-way quantum computer published in 2000, 2001, 2000 uh, in physics review letter. The reason I choose this paper is that uh, I'd like to introduce uh, other quantum computing uh, techniques uh, uh, other than circuit-centric quantum computing. If you're familiar with uh, Fiskit, you think that you, you uh, you think that quantum computing is just a uh, classical computing with special rules uh, that enables to solve certain problem exponentially fast, but uh, that's not true because there are other types of quantum computing such as uh, quantum adi adiabatic computing and uh, measurement-based quantum computing, uh, which is based on the one-way quantum computing. Yeah, so uh, I would like to introduce that kind of uh, other types of uh, quantum computing skills. Key is to use the entanglement as much as possible because entanglement makes quantum computers fundamentally different from uh, classical computers. Plus, the state is you can think of it as a qubit that, that is maximally entangled quantum state. So, we prepare initial state in uh, this kind of product state, which is not entangled, and uh, we can evolve this state with this in interaction Hamiltonian. This looks like uh, Ising, Ising type Hamiltonian. The result, resulting cluster state is like this. This cluster state has property of satisfying this eigenvalue equation. So the eigenvalue can be either plus, plus one or minus one, uh, depending on the configuration of qubit layers. Uh, here, uh, NGBH means the neighborhood of qubit A. Okay, so if you have a cluster state discussed before, then we can uh, measure qubits on Z basis so that we have this kind of state. Here, N means unmeasured qubits, uh, which forms a network like this. So before we go into uh, any, any more details, uh, let's look at this figure. So the dots is actually error coming from the screen, which represent the measured qubit on Z basis. And this vertical, error represent qubit measured in x basis, and this tilted error represent the qubit measured in xy plane basis. Yeah, so so this network cluster state is uh, similar to original cluster state of the local unitary, uh, depending on the measurement value. And also this network cluster state satisfies the, this kind of eigenvalue equation only with different eigenvalue. So uh, we have a wire or network. So let's use this network to do some quantum operations. Uh, we can measure unmeasured qubits in certain order and basis, depending on which operation we want to do. Horizontal wire, horizontal wire represents the flow of information, and vertical wire is used to implement two qubit quantum gains, which I will explain in, in later slides. So we perform some measurements like this, and at the final state, we choose a measurement base or readout basis to well to read out the qubits. Uh, important thing to notice here is that uh, we only use one qubit measurement. We don't really need to implement a bell-based measurement, which is kind of hard. Another property is that when we usually think about doing quantum operations, we usually increase entanglement and do some non non local pressures and then measure right uh, however in this one way quantum computing we first make a huge entanglement right uh, by making a cluster state and we measure its qubits so the entanglement entanglement decreases also uh, that's the big difference between measurement based quantum computing and circuit centric quantum computing uh, so let's see some examples here is how to propagate information we, we can prepare this kind of state, right? We have all plus states, and we'll discuss about this uh, initial state later. But uh, let's let's say it ju let's just say this is possible for now. And we perform entanglement as we discussed before, before, and measure all qubits except for the last one with x basis. Then we have this kind of state depending on the measurement. And uh, it is interesting that. Initial state and output state is 
equivalent of the local unitary, uh, which is this. Uh, we can actually calculate u sigma, which is either uh, identity or poly x z and x z operator. Uh, we can calculate u sigma with only two bits, which is the output of our measurement result. Okay, so using this, uh, we can implement single cubic gates. Here is a general representation of single cubic gates. Uh, for some who don't know about blow sphere and uh, single qubit representation, uh, here are some figures you can understand that help you to understand. A single qubit gate is essentially the rotation on this kind of blow sphere. We need to know uh, theta and phi, and also there, there's one more uh, parameter, which is global phase, but it's not shown here. But Okay, so, so we need three parameters to make a general single cubic gate. And that can be transformed into Euler rotation, which can be, which is represented in this kind of way. So uh, anyway, we need, we need these three parameters. Okay, so let's, let's go through some procedures. So we prepare this kind of initial state, uh, which is very familiar. We need five qubits here and we do integral modes. And after entanglement, uh, we have this kind of state. You can just calculate with pencil uh, if you like. And we measure qubit one to four uh, using this kind of basis. Notice that this basis is on um, x, y plane. And after measurement, uh, we have this kind of state. So initial state and output state is same up to local unitary. So what is this unitary gate? For simplicity, let's just choose alpha 1 as 0. So the measurement basis here is just measured in uh, x basis. Then u uh, intergate is in this form. So this is a uh, general, general single cubic gates. And these are some auxiliary gates we, we, which we can take care of because we, we know all the measurement values as 1 to s. If we want to implement this general single qubit gate, we prepare an integral inertial state and measure qubit one in alpha one equals zero and measure qubit two in alpha equals this. And measure qubit three in this basis and measure qubit four in this basis. These numbers are these numbers, right? So minus one factors are all cancelled out. So we have this kind of unitary gate implementation. And you can take care of this uh, auxiliary rotations at the end of the computation, which I will, I will discuss in later slides. And so we, we know how to implement single qubit gate. So let's implement a SINA gate, which is the most famous two qubit gate. For the people who don't know about SINA gates, uh, SINA gate is this. <laughs> SINA gate is this, so depending on the control state, uh, we can change, the, we can flip the bits of target state. So the output state is representing XOR operation. Uh, so in general, we, uh, we write SINA gate in this form. Okay, so let's say initial state is generally uh, I1 and I4. And uh, as uh, same as before, we prepare other qubits in plus state. Here we need four, at least four qubits. In this kind of configuration, uh, we again apply integral as before and measure qubit one and two on x basis. Then we have this state. Okay, this is XOR operation, which is so it means that we implemented Shinaki. It's that easy. So, uh, here we need to consider about this auxiliary rotation. So this is the two, I would say this is two, it's a, a product of state three operation on state qubit three and qubit four, but it's a product state. So uh, we can easily take care of. Before we saw how to implement SINA gate, but uh, in general, usually uh, our target state and Control state will be far away, right? So, using the uh, information propagation, we can uh, generally construct 
uh, Sina gate using this configuration. And well, the detailed operation would be different, but uh, uh, basically it would be the same. We use output, measurement output to make our target. To give more details, uh, we general represent uh, we general single cubic gate and Sina gate. We can make a universal gate set. This is not specific proof, but we can say that measurement based quantum computing is actually universal. Yeah, we assume that creating any initial state is possible, but uh, actually creating this kind of initial state is uh, very hard. But uh, using using this single qubit gate scheme and Sina gate scheme, uh, we can implement any uh, arbitrary initial state, right? So we apply some single qubit gates and Sina gates to uh, make a general initial state. Okay, so that's how we make initial states. And for compensating uh, auxiliary rotations, using this relation, we can see that auxiliary rotations can Go, go to front or go to back. So we can just keep making the auxiliary operation four. And at the final measurement, we can uh, take care of that auxiliary rotation into a uh, measurement basis. So uh, that's how we take care of uh, U sigma. Uh, up to now, uh, I discussed some main ideas on this paper. And I'd like to do some discussion with you guys. Uh, I have some questions and if you have uh, any insight uh, uh, i'll be glad to share this video okay uh let's do some discussions uh, so my first question is that what kind of physical system we can use to implement one-way quantum computing so in in the paper they said it has been already implemented in uh, neutral atom potential lattice and uh, 3D photonic lattice and some quantum dot system. So uh, what do you think? Uh, what would be the other uh, physical systems we can use? Oh, spin wave. Oh, can you explain more about spin wave? Let's move on to our next discussion topic. Do you think uh, auto connection is possible uh, in this one way company? Because if you consider 3D lattice, uh, we can make a duplicate wire over the uh, information flow wire. So, do you think uh, it'd be very easy to make that kind of uh, 3D uh, auto connection? And how about other benefits compared to other quantum computing uh, systems? Uh, uh, maybe that's, that's, uh, we just need, we to, just need to prepare a nice state, a nice state and, and just measure, measure it properly. It will be prone to less error, error than maybe or adiabatic computing. computing. Uh, how about other opinions? I wouldn't say. Yeah, uh, uh, using only one keeping measurement is a very huge benefit. Oh, that's right. Uh, and let's move on to the next discussion. Up to now, we consider a square lattice or, or a cubic lattice. But uh, how about what, what would happen if we consider a different kind of lattice out, such as closed pack, stru closed pack st structure? The number of neighboring qubits would be increased. So how would that affects the result. Any other uh, questions or other opinions? Okay, uh, if you guys don't have any more questions, uh, let's end this meeting. Mm -hmm.